As I was saying in the previous tutorial, if you want to become serious as an editor with Premiere Pro, you really want to consider getting into keyboard editing, and that's learning certain keyboard shortcuts. Now, you do have the option of being able to load keyboard shortcuts from other systems, from Avid Media Composer and Final Cut Pro, which I'll show you in a few moments. But in the previous version of Premiere Pro, if I just go back to CS 5.5 for a moment, you'll see that you had a whole bunch of options here for playing backwards and forwards, but also for shuttling and for jogging. And quite a lot of these have disappeared or been changed in Premiere Pro CS 6. If I go to CS 6, you'll see that you do have buttons for going backwards and forwards, um, but you don't have the jog wheel and the shuttle. And these buttons might not necessarily contain all that you want to have inside the panel. The first thing to say is you really need to get to know some very important keyboard shortcuts. And those keyboard shortcuts are the J, K and L buttons. Now if I push the L button, you'll see that the panel selected, I'm going to push K to stop. This panel selected, so you can see where it is selected with this orange bar all the way around it, is playing and playing forwards. And so I push K to stop. And if I push J, you'll see that it plays backwards and continues to play backwards until I push stop. Now if I want it to play backwards faster, I would hit the J key more than once. So that's J key once, twice, three times, four times, five times, K to stop. And the same with L. Hit L once, it goes standard speed and then faster, 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 K to stop. But what if you want to be able to go super slow? If I hold the shift key and tap L, I'm going forwards pretty much one frame at a time. And I can go a little bit faster and a little bit faster by just holding the shift key and continuously tapping L until I'm ready at the right speed and then K. And if I want to go backwards again, super slow, hold the shift key, J, and you can see it's going backwards one frame at a time. And I can be absolutely precise to get to where I want to get to by hitting the K key. So if I hit J to get backwards, an L to go forwards and get to the part where that little wave goes over just there and if I want to get to the point where it exactly starts I can hold shift J get back to that wave just beginning to crash over stop that would be my in point so I and then L go forwards until the wave goes over and then to get to precisely the place I want to finish I might do shift L and say it finishes or it looks good up to that point just before the castle goes out and I can do O to get my out point. So actually I've selected a new in point and out point for this particular item. Now I used to be able to have a key that would allow me to play in to out and I certainly have keys that allow me to go to the in point and go to the out point. If I want to go to this first in point I just hit shift I and go to the in point and shift O to go to the out point. So I can get to my in points and out points really quickly. Alternatively, I can click the buttons down here to go to in point and out point. And I can actually create new in points and out points with these two little buttons here, in points and out points. And I can play backwards one frame at a time. And I can play forwards. And I can play forwards one frame at a time. And I have all these buttons available, but I don't have all the buttons that I used to have available. And in actual fact, some people don't like to have the buttons at all because it is additional clutter. So let me just show you what you can do. Firstly, you've got a plus button here. If you click the button editor, it allows you to bring in new buttons. So if you want to work with buttons and say we want this play in to out, I can grab that and I can drop it into wherever I want to go. So let's say I want it just before my play button. So that's now playing into out. But if I hover over it, you'll also see that control shift space will let me play my in to out. My space bar will let me play and stop, but control shift or command shift space for a Mac will allow me to play the item from the in to out point without really needing to have that button at all. I could have the loop function here, but actually we can turn loop on for the whole playback if we want. And we've got the marker buttons. Notice, by the way, that the marker button has changed. We've got the marker button already down here, but we can see that if we want to add a marker, in previous versions we had an asterisk, but now it's a simple case of applying or hitting the letter M. So I don't need this, so I can just get rid of the marker button by selecting it, 
and just pulling it out here and it's gone and it's still available here to bring back if I want to and I know my in and out points are I and O so I can get rid of my in and my out point and I know that shift I will take me to well you know I could go through all these buttons and I could decide which ones I want to use and which ones I don't want to use some of them may be useful to me some of them may be not but if we want to we can get rid of these altogether and I'll show you how to do that in a minute there are a couple of other interesting ones we can clear in and out points but I don't think I need those the only other one is this one here which is play around now play around will play around ie a little bit before and a little bit after your playhead so where your playhead is play around will play a predetermined amount of frames before and a predetermined amount of frames afterwards that might be a useful one to have on but if you get to use it a great deal you'll see that it's already got a keyboard shortcut of shift k we can stick it in there if we want to for now and i'm going to click ok and they're my buttons, the ones that I may or may not want to use. But if you go to the panel menu up here, you'll see that you've got the option to show transport controls. At the moment it's ticked. If I click that, you'll see that all of those buttons disappear. And actually, this is where you want to be aiming to get to. Not being able to use any of the buttons, so that you've got a nice clear interface and everything's happening with keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to add mine back in at the moment, just for the sake of training show transport controls click the button here and you can see that you can reset the layout and it takes you back to how it was originally and the only one that I'm going to bring in at the moment is I'm going to bring in the play around just to demonstrate how that works a bit later on so I'm going to click OK and when I get serious about my editing and I know the keyboard shortcuts I want to use I can actually turn these buttons off completely by going back up to the panel menu and doing show transport controls and getting rid of those the only other thing to show you is the redesigned zoom function. On previous versions, if I go back to CS 5.5, you'll see you zoom in here. And we had a kind of a difficult to use zoom function actually up here in the, the source monitor. Well, now in Premiere Pro CS 6, we've got a single zoom function with this item below where we can zoom into our clip and we can actually then click on it to pull backwards and forwards to see different parts of our clip. So if I take the end and pull it right out, I'm seeing all of my clip, and there is my little bit in the middle. But if I just want to zoom into that particular bit, I can pull it in, and then I can make sure I'm over it, and there is my selected portion. And you'll see down here is the same in the timeline, and you'll see it's actually the same in the program monitor as well. So we've got a new zoom function, however that doesn't stop us from being able to use the plus and minus keys which allow us to be able to zoom in with our keyboard shortcuts. Those are the plus and minus keys which are to the right of the zero key on your main keyboard to zoom in and zoom out of whatever panel is selected. So that's how we can customize our look and we can really get into using those important keyboard shortcuts, the J, K and L and the shift J, K and L for the slower playback and play forward.